Hello everyone, my name is Kate Webb and I am the Strategic Project Consultant for the LSIPs in Berkshire and Oxfordshire and it's my job uh, to give you an overview of this webinar where you will hear information and updates on our activity so far. By way of an overview, um, we work um, as part of the Thames Valley Chamber of Commerce who have been designated the ERB, the employer representative body for both Berkshire and Oxfordshire. And we're responsible for creating the local skills improvement plans for both Berkshire and Oxfordshire. And we've been working very hard over the last year or more. And those plans were published back in August 2023. And we're right now in the middle of delivering um, and making sure that we are working together to make sure that the right training and skills are available for you, for employers, for our local businesses and for employees. Within the Chamber, we work as part of the Thames Valley Skills Unit. We're dedicated to skills and workforce development and our mission is to work on behalf of local employers to ensure that education and training providers, colleges and other institutions are delivering skills and training that will help you help employers and will improve the local economy. To do this, we do a range of things. Um, we provide information to help colleges and other organisations design and improve co uh, courses. Probably the biggest thing we do is to build those connections between business and education. We also help signpost and promote opportunities. So our activity so far in this webinar, you will hear uh, from the horse's mouth from people involved across the two counties in uh, the variety of activity. The most important thing we're doing are workforce development partnerships where business and providers are coming together on sector basis uh, to help provide solutions. And my colleague Simon Barrable will say much more about that um, in a moment. We're also delighted to announce that we are releasing a, a guide to working together, which will provide information and inspiration to both employers and education and training providers to help them work together um, and improve training and workforce development opportunities for everybody. You'll also hear today um, from our partners who are benefiting from a five million pound injection of funding from the government, directly linked to the priorities that we published in our local skills improvement plans. Um, and we're working very closely with that partnership of providers, um, including our colleges across both Oxfordshire and Berkshire, who are collaborating to develop new courses for priority sectors um, across the patch. We're working closely with them to support their plans and absolutely to ensure that employers have a voice in how that investment is spent. So that is uh, the summary from me in terms of what you will hear about in this webinar. Um, I hope you enjoy the information and learn more about us. Thanks very much, Kate. I'm uh, Simon Barrable, an engagement officer with the skills unit at, at the uh, Chamber of Commerce. And as Kate mentioned, one of the key pieces of work we're doing currently are uh, the formation and, and running of workforce development partnerships across a number of priority sectors in the economy. And so, uh, what, you know, what exactly are these partnerships? So essentially they're sector by sector groups which bring employers, education and training providers and, and some wider strategic partners together. Uh, we meet face to face uh, approximately quarterly uh, to, to build the relationships and, and the links that, that Kate mentioned between business and, and education and training. Just as important though is the, is the collaboration and project working that goes on between meetings by the members of the group. They're facilitated by the Chamber Skills Unit. Uh, they're all about fostering dialogue, uh, exchanging ideas uh, and really the, the promotion of, of collaboration between employers and, and education and training and ultimately they're about enhancing the, the skills and capabilities of the, uh, of the local workforce. So we, we cover uh, most of the priority sectors within the local skills in 
improvement plans for both Berkshire and Oxfordshire. Uh, we're, we're using some of the core local skills improvement plan funding to enable this. But we've also managed to leverage some additional local skills improvement funding to, uh, to run additional groups as well now. Uh, you can see the, the, the priority sectors that we're covering there. There's, there's a different focus for each of the, uh, of the groups as per the roadmap in the local skills improvement plans uh, and very much based around the needs of, of each of these sectors. We've also engaged employer champions in each of the sectors to, to lead on these partnerships. So uh, first up is, is care. The champion here is Sanjay Drona from the Close Care Home in, in Oxfordshire. Uh, the initial focus of, of this group is on changes to the current curriculum being delivered. Uh, these changes that we're looking at are, are designed to, to better meet the needs of employers. Uh, and we're also doing some work on the upskilling of current staff in the sector. Just a, a couple of examples around that. Uh, there's certainly more that can be done around the delivery of things like mental health first aid training, uh, situation management, creative thinking, food hygiene, uh, and, and also around the delivering of, of meaningful activities in, in social and residential care settings. Uh, next up is construction. Uh, the champion here is, is Lawrence Wright from the Helix Group. Uh, the key focus that's really emerged initially for this sector is the promotion of careers and, and the wide breadth of opportunities that are available in the, in the sector and in, improving understanding of these. And we're currently working on a, a roundtable event to, uh, to help with that. Uh, we're also building closer collaboration between local employers and, and training providers in the, in the sector. Uh, and really that's, that's to ensure that provision meets local needs uh, even better. Uh, and that includes the use of local skills improvement fund money on uh, green construction techniques. Next up, we've got haulage and logistics. Uh, we have Richard Perryman from Scan Global as, a, as our champion here. Uh, we're working very closely with the Chartered Institute for Logistics and Transport on, on this partnership. And our initial aim is to grow the Generation Logistics membership. That, that's a scheme that the Chartered Institute run, which, which sees current and recently re, uh, retired employees from the sector go out and, and promote uh, careers and, and, and opportunities. And, and there's a realisation here that the sector needs to promote itself as a career of choice to, to improve recruitment and also uh, career progression. Uh, health and life sciences, really important partnership for us, uh, the, the champion here is, is Harty Jutti, who's from Moderna. Uh, we've got a really strong base of employer support for this partnership through the existing chamber sector working group. And um, we recently ran a, a joint day with that group with the workforce development partnership in the morning a, and a chamber round table in the afternoon. Uh, we had a really good range of speakers there, uh, strong attendance and the presentations and discussions focused around skills needs, a new provision that's being rolled out across both counties, uh, the use of skills boot camps to uh, both bring new people into the sector, but also to, to upskill current staff, and also getting uh, career returners back into the STEM sector. Our hospitality and visitor economy uh, sees uh, Sarah Powell from Le Manoir as our champion. It's actually an Oxfordshire based uh, group, this one, but we have invited employers in from East Berkshire, uh, largely because of uh, the quite fast growing demand from the, from the growth of uh, Heathrow Airport. Uh, and that really shows the, the benefit of a cross regional approach that the Chambers, Chamber is able to bring. Uh, because they're they're running both the Oxfordshire and the Berkshire plans. 
Uh, we're looking at skills, needs and, and education and training provision, both nationally, locally and, and particularly sharing a good practice around this. Really, we're looking at what's happening there already that can be expanded more broadly and, and run out more systematically. And finally, the screen industries sector, which is focused on Berkshire. Uh, we have uh, Dominique Unsworth from Resource Productions as a champion here. There's a really powerful partnership with the BFI cluster for Berkshire that's, that's developed. Uh, and that's bringing extra resource into this partnership to, to help to drive it forward. Uh, we're already seeing training providers and industry being brought closer together. Uh, that includes the development of a new screen industry zone at Windsor Forest Colleges Group, working in collaboration with Cube Studios to ensure that the new provision that's going to be delivered there is, is very much up to date with industry needs. Uh, one example there is uh, a state-of-the-art virtual production studio that's being put into the uh, college. Uh, that's been facilitated by capital spend through the, the local skills improvement funds that have been made available, as, as mentioned by Kate. Uh, further actions for the group include uh, sustainability training for the sector, a train the trainer programme, to help people understand the breadth of careers and opportunities in the sector, development of, of new qualifications, particularly around uh, hair and makeup for TV and film, uh, training for self-employment, and also some work around making apprenticeships work for the, uh, the, the screen industries. Hi there, I'm Dom Unsworth and I'm chairing the Screen Sector Workforce Development Partnership for the Berkshire LSIP and I've been asked to give a little update on um, what we're focusing on, what we're doing, how it's been going. So um, our Workforce Development Partnership has uh, had two meetings. We had the first one which was uh, part of what became the launch of Screen Berkshire which is actually a British Film Institute BFI Screen Sector backed uh, collaboration across different education providers, employers and studios in the Berkshire area. So we were able to, to launch the Workforce Development Partnership at that event back in October last year. And we had over 70 local employers from the screen sector and the supply chain turn up to engage with that activity and to, to put forward what they felt was important to them in relation to the LSIP priorities and developing their own sort of supply chain and skills talent supply chain. So we had that launch, we then had another meeting and we had that up at New Directions College, um, which is a Reading, uh, Reading Council backed college in Reading. And we invited along at the request of the employers, all of the local training providers from all the local colleges, which included Activate, Windsor Forest Colleges Group, Newbury College, and Henley College on the border, as well as New Directions. We also had the University of Reading attend, and we had around eight different employers um, who were there saying what their skills needs were. We had uh, Cube Studios, a local virtual production studio, and uh, also Windsor Forest Colleges Group, Windsor College, give a presentation on their collaboration. And so the actions that have already taken place since meeting one and meeting two include that collaboration with Windsor College, where um, new facilities are being installed as we speak and a new specialism for Windsor College being established on behalf of Windsor Forest Colleges Group and the wider Berkshire um, kind of education economy is already happening right now. And we are currently developing curriculum and schemes of work in partnership with individual freelancers from the Workforce Development Partnership, as well as building in new partners every day across construction for film and TV, electrical and lighting for film and TV, makeup and prosthetics, um, scenic and also textiles and costume, as well as looking at things like accountancy and ways into production. So we've had the meeting up at New Directions, we've started the work to engage with curriculum development, and we've also been supported separately by Reader, the Reading Economic and Destination Agency, to mirror the work that is happening with the LSIP over with Activate at Reading College, and that work has started on short courses as pathways into 
uh, film and TV. So it's been a really active uh, kind of quarter from October when we launched um, through to December. And then again, January and February, we've been up and running out doing stuff with our partners. Those partners range from Bray Film Studios, Stage 50, Shinfield Studios, all the actual physical studios in Berkshire, as well as the supply chain. So people like MBS Lighting um, and Creative Construction, who are involved in the actual supply chain supplying the studios. We also have streamers, including Disney and Amazon, actively engaged. So we've got everyone we need in the room, and we're just trying to make things happen. The most exciting thing is looking at developing a potential apprenticeship that may be piloted next year as well as the new facilities that Cube are assisting installation with into Windsor College. Um, yeah, the aim is to take forward all of these actions to make sure we can get people trained and fit for purpose for our employers and build that local resource of crew and talent and employees and then also move towards engaging wider industry through the guilds that we work with within our sector. I hope that's a good update. Hi there, my name is Lawrence Wright. I am new business manager at Helix Construct. We are an SME main contractor based out of Newbury, uh, working all across the Thames Valley, the south of England, London. Um, and yeah, we I've been asked to comment on our involvement in the Construction Workforce Development Partnership, how the meetings have been going, where we're seeing uh, progress and where we're trying to get to as an organisation, and as a group. So um, thank you, Simon, for asking me to come and do this. I was also asked to present at the first um, meeting, which was really, really well attended, a really broad spectrum of people from across the industry, from tier one contractors through to SMEs like ourselves, from consultants, from supply chain, from designers, from QSs, everyone involved in the built environment and construction workforce. Also really interesting was a, was a whole bunch of local Thames Valley education providers and it's the first time I'd started to put together the pieces of the conveyor belt that the new workforce obviously starts out in education and then there's that blended handover from education part into work starting on site and then managing out out your career so I was really interested in in seeing and understanding that process and putting the whole thing together which was which was good we spoke um, at length about some of the challenges facing our industry particularly around the workforce and now that construction is it appears to be less popular than it ever was uh, you know growing up for me construction was was a fantastic career that everyone wanted to be in you knew you were going to get um, a great job with great prospects and we just don't seem to be getting that traction with with school leavers now so that's a big problem for our industry only exacerbated by global situations around brexit and and covid and and the war in ukraine and, and general economic and political uh, positions so understanding where our future workforce is coming from is a really significant and important topic that i believe the construction workforce development partnership um, can play a pretty significant role in trying to improve particularly when you consider all of the key players in the room along that conveyor belt, as I just mentioned. We had a fantastic um, presentation by um, a lady called Liz from the CIOB. She, she explained their involvement and how they can help companies up and down that spectrum access grant funding to support more and more um, uh, young people through education and into on site through apprenticeships, etc. Yeah, speaking personally from Helix, we discovered during that process that we were owed some money from the government, which was absolutely fantastic, straight onto the bottom line. So um, um, that was really beneficial for us. And I think likewise from the other other um, employers within the room, we're also going to get Liz and the CIO be back to our sort of supply chain day to get her to speak to our next tier down of our supply chain because they employ lots and lots of apprenticeships and not sure we've all understood and grasped the opportunities that um, for support from the government. So that's, that was a fantastic um, connection made during that process. And for me, the connections um, that are being made through the workforce uh, program is is the key to it. That, that's what that's really ultimately what we're all there for. Uh, we did map roles between the group. We started to set up a directory. We've had lots of, lots of touch points. We personally, my, I myself personally, have had touch points with various people since that meeting. Um, and ultimately, the the big 
the big sort of goal that we set ourselves was to inspire and inform more people about the built environment and careers in the, in the built environment. And that's a challenge that I personally um, have always championed and, and I will always champion construction. I think it's a fantastic industry to be a part of. I think it's got a career for everyone and anyone. And how do we get that message out there? So we have um, post the meeting, we have set up um, various different touch points. So gone in to see some schools and um, some of the education providers in the room have invited us in to give conversations, have topics uh, and chats with, with students. But also we have now close to um, announcing a, a round table discussion, which we're planning on filming, inviting the wider workforce group in, selecting maybe 10, 12, 14 of the key members to join this roundtable discussion. We're going to film it. It's all going to be around the topic of the next generation and, and trying to encourage some really sort of creative ideas and how, how we can do it. But also the point is is, is to get it out there in, in the wider domain and increase the volume of noise around this topic. Um, we have spoken to the housing forum who are keen to hear the results and would like to talk about it in their press releases. So yeah, we've got some fantastic opportunities off the back of um, the initial meeting, but the next meeting book for next quarter to, again, just get that message out there and start to connect some of the dots within our, within our, um, within our group to how we can um, make this industry even more attractive and easier for people to access and to understand and of course join. That's That for me is the ultimate goal. Um, as I say, it was enjoyable, the first one. We had some great debates. We were really, really engaged. It was a great turnout. Um, and we're looking forward to the next meeting in April. And hopefully between now and then, we've had this roundtable discussion and, and we posted it out on all of our social medias. We've really cast a net out as a community within this partnership and squeezed every single bit of publicity we can out of it. And I, I'm excited to see the results of that. So, uh, no, thank you, Simon, Elsip and the WDP for inviting us in. Uh, we're thrilled to be a part of it. And uh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to where this could go and ultimately to inspire and inform as many people as we can about this fantastic industry of ours. So um, thank you and uh, cheers for now. Bye. Hello, I'm Andy Marshall. I'm the project lead working for Activate Learning on behalf of the collaboration of colleges in Oxfordshire and Thames Valley, Berkshire. Both of our projects are there to respond to the LSIP priorities. In the north in Oxfordshire, Activate Learning are working alongside Abingdon and Whitney College, the Henley College and Ruskin College. And in the south, we have a, a group of colleges, Activate Learning again, Windsor Forest College Group, Newbury College and New Directions College, which is part of Reading Borough Council. In the north, we have a project of two and a half million pounds, around three quarters of which is capital, spent between September 23 through to March 25. There is significant capital investment being made by Abingdon and Whitney College in electrical installation suite which were ready within the next few months. Also, Activate Learning at the Oxford campus are developing their life sciences laboratories in response to the needs within the area. In the south, we have a similar two and a half million pound project. Again, the focus there is responding to those priorities within that region. In that regard, again, with a three quarter split of capital to revenue on a two and a half million pound project, Windsor Forest College Group are spending around three quarters of a million developing a screen industries studio and facilities in response to local needs within that very close area. Also, in our Reading campus at Activate Learning, there is going to be a sustainable technologies centre focusing on such sustainable uh, elements as solar and heat source air pumps and the like. Supporting all of this are a range of courses being developed and the funds are being used to support specialist teachers and outside specialists to come in to develop new curriculum to respond to those courses and skills which will be needed in the future. These include green skills, digital 
and some leadership and management where we've identified gaps with the support of the chamber who developed the ELSIB. And this is true in both Thames Valley Berkshire and in Oxfordshire. So there will be courses in green construction, flying drones, and including such things as online digital degrees. So again, all courses at different levels from level three to HE programmes.